if a person knows that someone is, is preaching the gospel, why would they ask if I need prayer? I don't understand. Yes, there is. No, I am allowed to evangelize. I am allowed to evangelize, sir. In the churches, in the churches, you just said it, sir, you said it wrong. In the churches, I can evangelize, I can evangelize, I can evangelize. You're not hearing it correctly, sir. I can evangelize. I am not a pastor, I am not a pastor, I'm an evangelist, sir. So don't be, don't be deceived, sir. You gotta hear your Bible correctly. You gotta hear your Bible correctly. In the churches, am I pastoring in the church at this moment? No, I'm not. So I can evangelize the gospel. I can talk about Jesus to amongst the Gentiles. Oh, absolutely. And it's funny because they don't want women preaching the gospel, but yet their men is not out here preaching the gospel. If you if you don't want women preaching the gospel, where are the men coming out here to preach the gospel? None of you men are out here preaching the gospel. But yet they're saying women cannot preach the gospel. But well, where are you then? If the, if the, you don't want women preaching the gospel, but yet you, you, you men are not out here preaching the gospel. Somebody's got to preach the gospel. Somebody's got to preach the gospel. So come on, man. I mean, you guys need to stop uh, 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 persecuting those that are willing to stand up for Jesus, to talk about Jesus, rather than saying that women shouldn't preach the gospel. But yet the men don't want to come out here to preach the gospel. I mean, come on. It, I mean, please, like, start making sense. If you're going to tell me I can't preach the gospel because I'm a woman, then I want you to come out here and replace me. Replace me. Don't just tell me. Replace me. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like, no, you guys need to, you guys need to really, um, you guys need to really be in the truth of God, you know? God bless you guys. <laughs> God bless you. Yeah, you know, it's nice to, to talk about your faith in Jesus. Uh, I'm not pastoring in a church, so I'm not asking for a congregation. I'm just simply talking about Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. That he died for sinners and that we have salvation only through Jesus Christ. You know, we have salvation only through Jesus Christ. And that's all that matters in the end, guys. God says that he will lead you in the way of life, that he will lead you in right paths. But you have to read the word of God because God says that, he, that my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And that's the word of God. So I'm not even asking for people to listen to me. I want people to listen to God. Because really God is the creator. He is our Lord and Savior. And he just wants you to know him. And have a relationship with him. And form a relationship with him. And really, he's a, he, right now he's attainable. We can reach God right now. It's amazing. I'm a witness to tell you that if you pray to God and you speak to God, he will hear you. He will hear you. Uh, it's just that a lot of the times we think that God is far off, but he's not far off. He's very near. At this moment, at this time, he's very near us, you know. So um, I just want to tell, to tell you that. So really, um, I wanted to read about what he, what he did for us in Isaiah 53. So in Isaiah, Isaiah 53, he says, Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness that when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his, in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. 
yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. For sin we shall see his seed. He shall, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities, because Jesus Christ justified many. And he says, Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. So he is now, he intercedes for all of us now. He is the mediator between God and man, is Jesus Christ. And um, so he was bruised and he was for our iniquity. And uh, and he, and God did not spare him. He delivered him up as, a, as an offering for sin so that we can be reconciled to God. And we are now reconciled to God through what, through what he did with his son, Jesus Christ. So thank the Lord for